oil pressure. Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Follow up on the 1986 LMTV. New alternator is installed. Customer finally sourced one. No sparks. Let's measure the voltage. Battery's hooked up. So on the 12, on the 14 volt post we got, let's see here. We got what? Sure, the right leads are hooked up. Twelve point five, and on the twenty-eight volt lead, we have twenty-five volts. Awesome. So let's uh, let's fire this beast up. There's one wire that was kind of hanging out with the broken eyelet. I think that goes to ground. That would only make sense, but we're gonna leave that off for now. Let's see, uh, let's see how it runs. Let's see if we remember how to... There it goes. Woo. Well, that horrendous sound was the fan touching the shroud because apparently during shipment the little protector piece was smashed in. So, bent it back with a pry bar, and now that spins nice. But we weren't seeing a charging system voltage, so we're not done yet. So, test light connected to ground. Test light lights on there. The tip light on this post right here. But according to our diagram, there's this energized switch. I don't know what that is or where it is. So everything works if we feed 20 volts to that voltage regulator. So I went home and did some hardcore research on this truck. Finally found the one and only source for wiring diagrams for the LMTV, and man, there are like 30 pages here, they're track style diagrams, uh, and you can't really read the fine print. The print quality that, you know, these are uploaded in leaves a little to be desired, but hey, it's a lot better than nothing. So why is this alternator not kicking on? Here's our alternator, and the charge excite circuit is TL35, which comes from uh, this is the main engine connector. And where does that go? Well, after more research, I found this thing has an alternator excite relay. Okay, now we're on the right track. So on the load side, it's normally connected 30 to 87A, and it's supposed to excite our alternator. If this other wire is grounded and the relay flips to 87, then we send power on this other leg that goes, you know, we really don't care, we just want to see 
if this alternator wire can be energized. So quick and easy, we can pop the relay out and jump pins 30 and 87A and see if there's wiring integrity going to our Excite terminal. Let's try that right now. Okay, so here's our K11. This is the relay, it's a five pin and 87A is in the middle and 30 is up top. So if we just jump those two, that's like the relay's normally normal state and flip on the ignition switch that should energize the excite terminal now test light to ground this terminal is not energized but hey this one is bright 24 volts very interesting if we pop the relay out or the jumper rather so I'm just going to take that out does anything change? Check that out. Nothing. Okay. So is it possible that these wires were not on correctly to begin with? Very possible. And good thing I take videos because in the initial video indeed this is the way the terminals were wired. The one with the red cap was on the Excite terminal. This is the other one. So, you know what? Let's, uh, let's just flip those two guys around and see what happens. Alright, so I flipped the two terminals around. I think this thing should charge. We still have that mystery wire, which we can figure out later. Turn on our voltmeter, pop in our relay instead of this guy. So with the ignition on, we should have voltage right here now. My test light's plugged in, which it never is. So we don't. Okay. I don't know. Let's give it a whirl. There we go. There we go. 13.4. Now look, our voltmeter is back, back online. Plus 28 volts. I like it. Sweet. We should see the green light. Customers, alternator is back online, running. Uh, the mystery wire, I don't know where that goes. And his uh, temp and oil pressure gauges are dead in the water. And the fuel gauge, well, I said the fuel gauge never worked, but we'll, uh, we'll see if he wants to proceed any further and go from there. All right, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Okay, hey, a little bonus footage here. Here's the original alternator, and this regulator does not have those blinky lights. So we don't know if it was hooked up properly or not. I'm guessing yes, because this is the fatter post, the exciter terminal. But if they had it hooked up with the wire with the red cap on here, it still would not have worked. That's probably why the guy drained his batteries, replaced them, crossed them, burned up this alternator, 
when there's nothing wrong with it, obviously. <laughs> there was nothing, nothing wrong with it. But interesting to note that this is an older model, I guess. The newer one has those indicator lights on it. There you go. Cool. Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Back on the 1986 Stewart and Stevenson LMTV 1078. Uh, alternator works great. Now the owner wants me to fix all the other odds and ends to get get it ready for sale. And first thing is we can't lift the cab anymore. Now we lifted it once or twice using the manual pump. Now the truck runs. And we can't raise the cab either way. We just hear the hydraulic pump going nothing's happening is this thing out of fluid well I bought a five gallon pail of mobile 424 hydraulic fluid so let's see this little hydraulic reservoir up here I pulled the dipstick and there's nothing in it so using this handy bucket pump found on Amazon let's uh, fill it up and see if the cab lift system comes back to life all right here we go let's just slowly use our pump and try to fill this guy up I don't know what the capacity is but I think it's bone dry where did the fluid go is my question Ah. We can always use the dipstick to see if we're getting close. It's a little guy here. Yeah, it might be on the on the bottom end there. Yeah, I think it's right there. So let's keep going a little ways. Okay. All right, now we're at least above the low line. Let's see if our cab starts lifting. Once everything's full of fluid, we'll top off the level here. Well, the pump is still doing nothing. We're in cap tilt, cap tilt raise. No action. However, with the manual pump, see our little latch is coming out. And I don't know what I did, but it seems to be working <laughs> with that airline completely disconnected. Maybe it doesn't do anything. I'm not sure. Zip tied off. I noticed the alternator was not charging. That's a problem. Okay, so let's start up the truck. I saw this light was not green. Alright, so we're doing some troubleshooting on the new alternator on the LMTV 1078. And this is the upgraded N1511. Uh, the original one was 10.15.06, so right there, N15.11, and this one has the upgraded regulator with the two flashing lights, and they're flashing amber right now, so let's look at our troubleshooting 
guide right here 500 series troubleshooting guide and come down here there's the layout of the alternator all the terminals handy wiring diagram there's our voltage regulator so we have our 28 volt and 14 volt systems and here we go for the actual troubleshooting guide. So LED color flashing amber on both 28 volt and 14 volt systems. Alternator is not producing power, circuit is overloaded. See chart 1 and page 5 for 28 volt systems. So we keep going down. This is our troubleshooting tree. So yes, we do have 28 volts. We do have 28 volts on the E-terminal. Not worried about that, yes. Or does the alternator charge? No, it's not charging, so we go to no. Turn off engine, leave key on, connect jumper wire from pin A and harness plug to B terminal on alternator. Spark will occur, touch steel tool to the shaft to detect significant magnetism. Is shaft magnetized? Well, that one we can do with a test light. So here's our regulator and I undid that six pin connector. And if we hook up our test light to ground and touch pin A, which is this guy right here. Let's see. Well, okay, so I have the main leads disconnected, but all the tests actually passed. So there was 28 volts on pin A, and that is our field. You know, the regulator pulls that down to energize the field. So that's continuous, that's good, yes. Test for battery voltage at pin D, that also passed, yes. Connect DMM red lead to pin C and B minus. This continuity exists, so basically we're checking these guys right here. Pin A, F minus. So we had voltage on there, it's waiting to be pulled to ground. Pin C, it lit a test light. If we attach our test light to battery positive, so that's just the ground. Then D and E, bright test light and regular test light brightness. Those two pins are good. And pin F, this is the last check here that I'm doing. So the last check here on pin F, set DMM to diode test, connect DMM red lead to pin F on harness plug, connect black lead to alternator battery positive terminal. That's a 28 volt terminal, reverse leads meter should read open loop in one direction and voltage drop in another. So here we have pin F on one side of the voltmeter and B plus 28 volts on the other. Now alternator is disconnected, we're just doing a resistance diode check. And this way, it, there's half a volt drop, that's perfect. If we reverse our leads on the meter, easier to do it on the meter than on the truck, we have open circuit. So all the tests pass, if it says yes, regulator is defective. So, I don't know why, but this regulator apparently crapped out. Yeah, there's our diode drop, so everything's good in here, which is good news. I think we need a new regulator. So the one thing we can actually check, or do a bypass test on this, is this guy. Connect jumper wire from pin A and harness to B minus terminal and alternator. Basically energize that field and see what the voltage goes up to. Spark will occur, touch steel tool. So this is engine not running, but we'll start it up, connect everything, and basically, we can even do it right here. Just connect this to ground. We could do it through a 5 amp test light, just to not full field the alternator. See what the voltage goes up to, and you know, then we'll just get a new regulator.
So here's the setup. We have 24.8 volts on the system right now. Regulator is unplugged and all I have here is a jumper that's waiting to be grounded. This is the field wire for the 28 volt system. Then we have a five, well, four amp test light. So if I hook this up to here, we get current through our field. And basically we're gonna start up the truck and ground that and see what our voltage goes up to and that will make sure that everything in the alternator is good, the diodes are working properly, that it can charge and the problem is just in that regulator circuit. We could even start with a um, the one amp setting on the test lights. By the way, the regulator itself, let's even zoom in on this part number, 76761 and 3207. So we'll try to find a new one before we take off the old one but it's it's not serviceable it's all sealed in there so we need a new magic box courtesy of eBay we got a brand new old stock voltage regulator I said it was surplus so I don't think it's ever been used it's still packaged in plastic Does that look used? I don't know, let's plug it in and see if the little green lights come on. All right, here's the moment of truth. Let's fire this beast up. Oh yeah, back in the green. There's the voltage regulator. make army trucks more reliable than this. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense, so we'll mark this one bad. We don't know what's inside. Magic pixies, right? It looks like sand and silicone. So all we have to do left on this truck is look at the gauges, like oil pressure, water, and it should be fixed. Hopefully he sells it before it breaks down again. So for our gauges, the fuel level sender is right here. We got two wires, there's rodent damage. So I cut those off, clean those up. A ground and a wire that comes from the actual gauge. So, measured voltage here, there, we didn't have any. Let's follow that wire. And we have more rodent damage. This white wire right here, it's all chewed up. And I got it up here and I'm grounding it through a test light. I want to see that fuel gauge go from empty to full. So if we don't have this grounded, then when you turn the key on, we go to E. Let me ground that wire. Through a test light. Test light's not lit. Boom, our gauge is on F. 
So all we got to do now is fix those wires. Our fuel gauge will work. The water gauge. Now I measured all the gauges with a bypass test, just like we just did with a test light. You can ground the signal wire, and the gauges all jump to oil pressure in the water. They jump to their max. So the water one. I think the engine just needs to run for a while. The signal was dropping, the voltage was dropping, and this needle was, I think, starting to climb. So let's fix the fuel gauge right now. And then the last one will be the oil pressure. All right, so fuel pressure sending unit wiring is repaired. There's so much fuel we really have. It's getting close to the E mark. Bolts work. Oil pressure is the one I'm worried about. Once we warm it up, water temp should come up. Voltage, volt meter is good. The pressure, front and rear air brake gauges are good. So just, just the oil pressure gauge. Let's look that up. So there's the voltage on the signal wire for the water temperature and after running a few minutes we'll see this drop to like seven or six volts you can see it's slowly dropping as the engine warms up and for a bypass test you can always Use our test light and just take the positive lead of the voltmeter and look at the gauge. Boom. So the gauge works perfect. That voltage is just going to have to drop and it should work. All right, we found some more wiring damage. Here's the oil pressure sending unit. Yep. Where's that wire? Well, it's right up here. Chewed clean off. And then I also found a wire for, maybe this is like the warning light. Um, I actually don't, yeah. That's probably the warning light for the temperature. So this is the radiator hose. So we'll fix these two wires and see what comes back to life. All right, we got a little extension wire for the oil pressure sending unit, and also repaired the wire on our temperature sending unit. Let's see which gauges come back to life here. Woohoo, we got oil pressure. And our water temp. Eight point six. So we'll warm it up and see if this guy actually moves. Awesome, love it. All right, here we go. Let's see reverse. How do you shift this thing? Parking brake off. Okay. Mode on. There we go. We're in reverse. That is cool. Let's uh, open up these mirrors so we can see. And they put power windows on this thing, right? Okay, that's pretty good.
because it's too easy. If this was an R a Russian army truck, it would actually be uh, challenging to drive. watching hope you enjoyed that and stay tuned for more see you next time bye bye So Bob's putting in some diesel fuel. How big is this tank, Bob? 100 gallons? 100 gallons, yeah. And I'm paying for it right now since Bob forgot his wallet. So this might max out the credit card. <laughs> well, we have to get home, so that's probably 20 bucks. Yeah, yeah, it's at least 20. We'll, we'll put, you know, a good, good 40 bucks in it. I mean, this thing is legit. Yeah, like, yeah. We're at least twice as high as any pickup truck on the road, which makes you feel kind of <laughs> manly. Eight gallons. Uh, eight gallons. Oops. Let's floor it and see how fast it can go downhill. 7th gear. Yeah. 